Israelites will be calling me saying, brother, I need to have this talk with Zion Lex. Mm -hmm. So I want to I want to be clear. I want the people to get a clear perspective of your view and your teaching. Are we talking about the same Jesus? That's number one. Because I remember Garfield coming out saying that he believed that Jesus was real. And when I asked him this question, that's when everything flipped and changed. <laughs> Are we talking about the same Jesus of the Bible, of the King James, where he did these miracles? He brought the deaf back to life, made the blind see, walked on water. Are we talking about this Jesus, sir? The Yeshua that we're speaking of, who is said to have done these things, mm -hmm. the groups that went against him also said he did those things. Oh, wow. Okay. So let me let me put it to you this way. In my latest work entitled The Messiah Codex, Volume 1, one of the things that I challenge Old Testament thinkers and practitioners to consider is this. The Pharisees were completely against Yeshua, his doctrine, and his teachings. They are the ones who go on to compose what we refer to as the oral tradition. By the way, when you see me point to this side, all of the books on this side of my shelf deal with the Israelite oral tradition. Mm. All of the books on this shelf right here deal with Afrocentric history, culture, and learning. Right? So the That's Kenneth what I respect and love stuff. about you, brother. You got you do that. Yes. All the way. Mm -hmm. So the Pharisees are the ones who go on to curate and give us what is referred to as the oral tradition. Now watch where things get interesting. In the Pharisaic record of the historical Jesus, not only do they say that he existed, but they say that he, in fact, produced those miracles that we are having in question at the moment. However, what they say is he was inspired by demonic influence and he was inspired. And this is where things also get interesting. Let's, let's get a little controversial. Yeah. Whenever I come on your platform, I know you're going to see in the comments, Mr. Controversial at some point, right? Yes. To get a little controversial, the Talmud specifically, and I'm referring to the Talmud, the Talmud specifically says with regard to Yeshua and him producing miracles, they say he learned that in Egypt. And so what's interesting to me about that is this. The people who had every reason to go against him, which are the Pharisaic schools, they are the first ones, apart from secular historians, to go on record saying that Yeshua is a historical person. The Pharisees hated him. If they chose and so deemed to make him ahistorical, non-historical, then they would have simply erased him from history. But instead, they tell you who his mother is. They tell you who they believe his possible fathers are. They tell you that he had five and not 12 disciples. And they also say that he produced miracles, except that they believe that those miracles is magic that he learned while he was in Egypt. That's all inside a work known as the Talmud. So I'm an intelligent person. And being such, one of the things that I'm going to ask myself is the obvious question. For people who had every reason to reject him, hate him, and go against him, why would they first acknowledge that he existed when it would be easier in their argument to just say he didn't exist? Two, why would they say he produced miracles if he truly didn't when it would be easier for them to just say he didn't do it? But they still said he did it. Now, here's my thing. I don't know that Yeshua produced miracles, but I do know this. Those who followed him said he did. And those who rejected him said he did. So as a researcher, I would have to give credit in the area of saying that the possibility is that he did. All right. Powerful.